grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. As I get older, my memory gets a little bit fuzzy, but I'm pretty sure this is a comic strip I'm going to tell you about that I saw maybe about 20 years ago. And I'm thinking it was a church comic strip, and there used to be this comic called Pontius Puddle, which was which was uh, printed in various uh, church-type publications. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I know the strip. I'm just not sure if I'm crediting it properly. But anyway, uh, the strip starts with a guy who is wondering, do his prayers amount to anything, or is he just talking to empty space? And so he says, he says, okay, God, this is it. If you're really there, you've got to give me a sign. Tell me what you want me to do with my life. If you're there, tell me what to do. Thundering voices heard. Feed the hungry. Care for the sick. Welcome the stranger. And give generously from the abundance that I give you. The man praying says, thanks, God, but I was just testing God sighs and says, so was I. So was I. So what does God, what does God want for us? What does God want from us? What's God want from this church? What's God want for this church? What's God want from the world? What's God want for you? These are the kinds of questions that followers of Jesus and congregations should be asking all of the time. And there are times in our lives when we do ask. One of the most frequent pastoral care requests I get is from someone who wants some help in discerning. Folks who are trying to figure out maybe what to do with their careers or what to do about a particular family issue or what they should be doing to answer this sense of call that they are feeling from God, you know, all different kinds of calls, but whatever the call is, what do I do with that? And so sometimes in life we are very attentive to what God wants, but frankly most of the time we're not. We just do what we do because that's what we do and that's the way we've always done it. I had to laugh, I think it was last year, we took CPR training, a bunch of us took CPR training, and training on the AED, which is, if I can say it right, the Automatic Electronic Defibrillator. Did I say it right? Okay, <laughs> pretty close anyway. So we had, a, we had an instructor who was a, an EMT instructor, a local guy, and he, he works with one of the local volunteer fire departments, I don't remember which one it is. Uh, but he was telling us a story while we were taking our training. He said he's often on duty on call on Sunday mornings, and he's often been called to various churches around the community. Somebody collapses or is having some kind of a medical emergency, you know, and the ushers take care of what they, they call 911. And the ambulance shows up right outside the door, and the EMTs come running in with all their equipment. And they're really hard to miss, he says. He said one thing he's noticed every time that's happened. He said, this is a funny thing. The preacher never stops. They just keep on doing what they're doing. <laughs> In our first service this morning, we had a gospel reading, and it's kind of a story like that. I can tell you the story. I don't think we need to read it this morning. Jesus does what Jesus does. On the morning of the Sabbath, he goes to synagogue. Nothing unusual there. Jesus being who Jesus is, he sees somebody in need, and he does something about that. And he heals a woman who has been bent over, crippled for 18 years. And the response is, wait, 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 that's, that's not in our bulletin. There's no healing in here. There's no, there's no space in there for somebody praising after being healed. We don't do that. It's not on the screen. It's not in our PowerPoint there's a dispute, and that's often what happens when Jesus does something. There's a dispute about it. But Jesus points out there's some things that are more important than the way we've always done. So what does God want from this congregation? And I don't know that we can come up with a whole lot of definitive answers in one 15-minute sermon, but I think it, we can at least start asking we can start having the conversation. I'm, I'm anticipating this is a conversation that's going to go on 
probably over the next six months, maybe over the next year, and I'm going to tell you why it's going to happen. I mentioned this the other day. It was about 20 years ago people had the vision of this particular space, this beautiful worship space that we are in. Not only did they have the vision, they, they acted on that as God's call, and they built this place. They raised the money to do it, or at least a good chunk of the money. Well, early next year, we're going to reach a milestone. We're going to be able to retire the mortgage. Praise God, right? <laughs> it's a great thing. It's a time of celebration. But it also begs the question. Once we have completed this really major commitment, what does God want next? I want to give you a little bit of time to respond with a few ideas uh, for what maybe God wants for this congregation or from you personally. But first, I want to take a look at brief look at that reading from Isaiah 58. Again, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to point out some highlights. Remember, this is the people of Israel have been restored. And, and God is basically telling them, okay, now you've got, you've got your reboot, your restart. Here's what's really important, God is saying. You've got and through the prophet, the Lord says, if you put an end to oppression, if you sat in, if you put an end to every gesture of contempt to every evil word if you give food to the hungry if you satisfy those who are in need then the darkness around you will turn to the brightness of you and a whole bunch of other really good stuff is going to happen I'm glossing over all those other good things God said it happened and then a little bit later the Lord picks this up again he says if you treat the Sabbath as sacred well then you will find the joy that comes in serving you it's not an exhaustive list, but you kind of get the idea of what God wants. End to oppression, end to hurtful words, beginning to feed the hungry, honoring the Lord, finding joy in service, and we can go on and on and on, I'm sure. But what's God want from us? I want to hear a, a few of your ideas. You know, we're not going to have time to have a major conversation here, but I want you to just think, and it can be really general at this point. We've got a lot of time to figure out specifics. But in general, what are some things do you think God is calling us and this congregation to be about as we enter this new phase in our life? So let's hear a few ideas just to get us rolling. I think we came up, there were five very general ideas at the first service. We'll, we'll jump to them if we need to, but let's hear your ideas. Anybody? Yes, Janet. Okay, we should be about feeding the hungry. Okay, what else? Good idea. Yes, more. I'm sorry? Support the church. Okay, so the generosity part, right? Very good, Warren. Anything, anybody else got anything? You write these down? Okay. <laughs> community outreach. Being out and about in the community and showing the love of God out in the community. Any other things we've got? What else should we be, be about in Susan? Truly welcoming all. Okay, it's something we say, we try hard on it, but we can probably always do better at it. Okay? Welcoming all very intentional about them. Helping the homeless. Yeah. Great idea. Something we don't do a lot right now, frankly. Anything else got one? Yes. Veronica. Helping struggling families. Okay. Is that outside the church, inside the church, or both? Yes. All of the above. Helping struggling families. Anybody else? Got one? These are really good. The ones from the first service, uh, somebody talked about outreach in the community, which is kind of what we heard here. So, and somebody talked about inreach, caring for our own members as they run into problems. Oh, reaching out to the younger generation, specifically the millennial generation. It's like the 20s, the 30s or so, early 30s. And praying for each other. Is that all of them? Local, oh, and, and supporting local charities. So, so we got some really good ideas. Maybe, what do we got, about 15 total now. All right, so great. These are all wonderful ideas. One, to begin to use these kinds of things as food for thought as we, as we go forward from here. As I was thinking and praying about this, I didn't get a systematic answer. I didn't come up with a plan or a program or anything like that. But what I got as I was thinking about this is I got a series of images, and many of them think will resonate with some of the things you already said here this morning. So again, this is I'm not proposing any kind of program or anything. 
you can take it or leave it. I just want to share with you the, the images that I got. And was, the images were a series of encounters. So you're going to hear what I'm going to tell you is a series of encounters. So I had the image of someone who comes lonely and dejected, wondering if there is anyone who cares. And she was greeted and welcomed and made to feel at home. I had the image of someone who was down on his luck and met someone who knew someone and an opportunity opened up. I had the image of someone who had lots and lots of questions and found a safe place and opportunities to explore those questions without judgment and without pressure. I had the image of someone who wondered if there really was forgiveness and if that forgiveness could be for him. Through our ministries, found the forgiveness, the unconditional love and forgiveness of God. I had the image of someone who was struggling with addiction and, and found support and strength through some of our people. I had the image of someone who was far away and probably will never, ever come here, but whose life was made better because of something we are doing. I had the image of in this time when ELCA congregations and mainline congregations in general are really struggling, that this congregation could be a laboratory, could be a classroom, and could be a resource center for how to stay active and vibrant and relevant in the 21st century. So I had a lot of images. I had a lot of, a lot of visions of encounters. I don't have any systematic plans or programs for you. Just some things. So we've got a lot to think about. We've got a lot to discern uh, over the next six months to a year. But in all that, I want you to remember, we do have a call from our Lord. We have the promise of the Lord's blessing. We have the wisdom and strength of the Holy Spirit. We have the love and forgiveness of Jesus on the cross at the end of the day. And basically, we know what God wants. All we've got to do is figure out what's going on. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your